Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video we're going to be checking out Caddy. It's both a reverse proxy and a web server similar to Nginx but it's probably one of the more simple to spin up. So by the end of this video you'll have Caddy up and running, you'll be running a web page, you'll be pulling certificates via Let's Encrypt and you'll be also able to reverse proxy to other containers or services running on your network. There's a little bit to go through so let's jump over to VS Code and let's get started. Now for this video I've spun up a new virtual machine just because I don't want any conflicts with my existing proxy and also with Portainer which I've got running on this machine as well. You can see this machine here, which currently only has Portana, and I'm accessing this on 200.117, which is exactly the same as this machine here. Now, when it comes to Caddy, it's probably one of the most simple to spin up, especially if you want to get a certificate using an HTTP challenge method. It's basically as simple as creating this Caddy file over here and pulling that cert. Now, I'm not going to do that in this video because it's really simple to do. And to be honest, I prefer the DNS challenge method. That's better in my opinion because if you're a home labber, you might want to keep everything restricted, i.e. you don't need port forwarding for a DNS challenge. And also you might not even be able to do port forwarding, especially if you're behind something like CGNAT. Now, unfortunately, there is no inbuilt method of doing this. We have to build our own Docker file, but using my compose file you can see on screen, that's going to use the exact same command as we always use, that docker compose of dash D. But before that, you know it, we're going to go through the whole configuration file so you understand exactly what's going on and you understand exactly which parts you're going to need to change to make this work. So let's get on to it. So for this setup, I've tried to keep it quite simple. You can obviously break up these files however you wish. You can see here on the left, we've got an environment file. We've got a caddy file, a Docker compose file, a Docker file for building the Docker image, and also just an index.html to serve up just a basically a blank web page. So we're gonna go through the compose file first, and then we'll go through the others in sequence. So essentially to get this up and running, we're simply gonna do the caddy for one of the services. And the important bit here is we're going to build it. And we're going to build it using this Docker file here, which is this one over here. And we'll have a look at that in a moment. Once we specified that, it basically looks like a standard Docker Compose file. So we're going to call in this .env file. The reason we're doing that is because in this env file, I've got some API keys and my email address to pull down my Cloudflare token, which you'll need, but also it does support a myriad of other DNS providers. So you simply need to change this Docker file in a moment to the version that you're using. Next, we specify those variables in the environment section, and then we do some ports. Now, importantly, and what makes this really cool is Caddy actually has an API that you can plug into. Now, in order for that to work, you need to set 2019, that's the default port, to enable that to work. And what that means is you can actually do command line interface requests to Caddy to basically change configurations, check out its versioning, etc. You can reboot it and all of that sort of good stuff. After that, we get onto things that you're probably more familiar with. So port 80 and 443, pretty standard for your generic HTTP, HTTPS traffic. After that, we're going to need some volumes. You can do this however you wish. I've simply created two volumes here, one for the config and one for the data. Those are respectively defined down here. And then I've manually mounted the caddy file, which is this one over here. And I've manually mounted this index.html, which will give us an example web page. After that, really, you don't have to specify a network, but I'm going to create a network. The reason I'm going to do that is because I can put then other containers onto this Caddy network. And then instead of needing to know their IP address, for example, I can merely specify just their DNS name. And because of DNS wizardry in Docker, it will automatically route that traffic for us. We will need to create this network again before we spin this up. After that, we're just going to define the network as external true down here. So with all that said, let's jump into the Docker file now because we haven't done a lot of building of Docker images. So it's pretty straightforward. And actually, Caddy have a Docker image for you called Builder, which helps you to build these images. Now for production, I recommend that you actually pin a version to this, but I think for a home lab, and especially if you understand the notion of there could be breaking changes in the future, so be aware of it, I think it's okay to run sort of latest versions in a home lab. But as I said, if you don't want to do that, please do go ahead and pin the specific version. So we're going to pull this builder version first, and then we're going to execute the command of xcaddy. This is basically the command for building your own custom images, which you will need for the Cloudflare DNS provider, 
which is the one here. So as I mentioned before, if you go to github.com slash caddydns, there are a number of other providers in here. So if you're not using Cloudflare, simply substitute this Cloudflare value for the value of your provider. Then we're basically baking this image and we're gonna embed it into this latest image. So we get the custom built image, we build our own, and then we basically package it into the latest caddy image. We then copy that from the builder and then we publish our own image. And if we quickly go back to that Docker compose file, you can see here that we're gonna build it using that context, and then we're actually gonna run it. You'll see that there isn't actually an image specified. Normally you would have say an image and it'd say caddy um, colon latest, something like that. This basically inherits the one that you've just built as the default. So it's gonna build the image and it's instantly gonna use it. So we don't even have to worry about declaring the image itself. Once we've done that, we obviously want to then have the environment variable because during this compose up, it's gonna automatically build and then deploy it and it's gonna read this environment file here. So in this EMV file, I've got my API token for Cloudflare. Again, substitute that with whatever credentials you have for your provider and also the Cloudflare email address that's associated with my account. Now I've covered this multiple times, but well, basically log into Cloudflare, generate an API key and stick it in here. You can either make that explicit to just one DNS record, or you could make it account wide. So now that we've discussed the environment variable, the container should be up and running. But what we actually need to do now is to configure how we want Caddy to work. So that's where this Caddy file comes in. Now, there are two ways of doing this. You can use a Caddy file or you could use a JSON file. Now there are pros and cons to both, but I like to think that the caddy file is easier to understand. So for kind of a tutorial, that really made sense to me. So let's have a quick look through it. It should be self-explanatory. So we have this block at the top, which is for the admin, and that is basically the API, which I mentioned before. Now you obviously don't want to expose this to the internet and just do it locally. And if you don't want it at all, just remove this block and everything should be fine. You won't have it open by default. Next up, we're gonna serve some blocks. So a bit like we had in Nginx, we're gonna define here, and I'm gonna be pulling down a wildcard certificate from Let's Encrypt using Caddy. And in here, we're gonna specify this TLS block. I'm gonna say my DNS provider is Cloudflare, and that's why we built in the previous with the Docker file, we pulled down the actual Cloudflare module. And in here, we're gonna specify our token. So you could just paste in here your token, but it's more secure to lock this in an EMV file and then call it when it's required. I put in a propagation delay of two minutes. So basically it'll wait two minutes to make sure that the DNS challenge, remember, this is gonna write a text record to our domain registrar. It's gonna then query that text record. And basically if it finds it, it knows that we could log in and we could change it. Therefore we must be who we say we are, i.e. we own the domain, we can pull a certificate. I'm specifying the resolver to be Cloudflare. I'm hoping that because I'm with Cloudflare, their propagation will be almost instantaneous. After that, we get onto the bits that you're probably most interested with. This is basically how to create different blocks to do different things. So each one of these blocks, as you can see here, is doing something different, and we'll come onto this and test it all later. So here I'm just calling caddy.jimsgarage.co.uk. This is actually gonna serve up a website that's being hosted by Caddy itself. And if you remember, this slash user slash share slash caddy, that's the default location, if we have a look in here, for this index.html. So you've guessed it, you can basically pop a website into this slash caddy folder and it should serve it up. And that's what you can see here. So this is gonna act basically, if you import caddy.jimsgarage.co.uk into your browser, it should serve up this index.html file and we'll see that later. Next, we get on to sort of the more traditional and the names here, reverse proxy. And for this example, I want to show you how to reverse proxy an external service. So as you guessed it, this is going to TrueNAS. And TrueNAS is not a Docker container that's on this machine. It's a separate dedicated piece of tin that I've got on my network. And I want to route it through Caddy with the bonuses of the HTTPS certificate. So to do that, we create TrueNAS, we specified it as a host, and then I've given it a DNS name. Remember, all of these DNS names will have to go into your DNS resolver. In my case, that's PyHole. We've created a handle for TrueNAS, just to mean that we can call this later without having to specify all of these details. And then I've simply said it's a reverse proxy, 
and it's on this address here. So in this instance, from Caddy to TrueNAS, it will operate over port 80, which is obviously unencrypted traffic. But between the client, i.e. my machine, any of my other devices and Caddy itself, it's going to use HTTPS. And finally, we get on to how to route traffic to another container. And as I've already showed you, the Portainer instance that we've got up and running, this is simply running at the moment with the IP and the port, which isn't great. So to fix that, we're going to spin this up in a moment. We're going to say again, Portainer, I'm just going to call this one caddy-portainer. It's going to reverse proxy and it's going to reverse proxy to, importantly, HTTPS, because by default, Portana will use a self-signed certificate and it's going to do it to Portana 9443. Now the way that that Portana is able to be called that is because I'm going to change Portana to sit with on the Caddy network. Now because it's a self-signed certificate we do actually need to put in this additional block here which says that the back end is TLS because it's 9443, 443 HTTPS. But we're going to say that the TLS is insecure and we want to skip verification, i.e. we already know because we can kind of see in here that it's not secure. So we're basically saying, don't worry about that. This is a self-signed certificate. We don't care. And the beauty is that eventually we're going to get our own certificate that's going to be pulled down by Caddy and it's going to be able to serve TrueNAS with a valid certificate. Now, this has been a whistle-stop tour of the configuration. There's a ton more stuff that you can do with Caddy and there's a myriad of different flavors that you might want to spin up this for your home lab. But hopefully this gives you a brief overview of how to pull certs, how to basically reverse proxy, how to create a website, etc. So without further ado, let's jump now into the command line. Let's try and get this running and see if everything works. So the first thing I want to do is that sudo docker network create caddy because we're going to create the caddy network and that's where caddy is going to sit on. And it's also the network we're going to put Portana on so we can reference it as Portana and then colon 9443. We don't have to worry about its actual internal IP address. Now that we've created the network, we should be able to start spinning up the Docker Compose file. So if I navigate to the Docker Compose file, let's just check we're there. Here you can see all of the files we've got on the left. So if we do a sudo docker compose of dash d, what this should do, remember, is not just pull it down. We actually need to build first. So here you can see it's gone away. It's pulled the image, it's built it, and then it's put it basically into that file. So we've added that module and then it's used it, say it's built, it's created the networks, the volumes, and it should be spinning up now. So if we hop over now into Portana, we should see that Caddy is now running. And let's have a quick look in the logs to see what's going on. Now in here, we should be able to scroll down and we can see that it's actually now challenging for a certificate. It's looking for a wildcard of Jim's garage and now it's trying to solve that challenge. So I think because I've specified two minutes, it's actually gonna wait two minutes. So we'll fast forward and hopefully that should resolve and we should have a valid certificate up and running. Okay, so I think that took a little bit less than two minutes, but here you can see that I've successfully obtained a certificate for start.jimsgarage.co.uk. Brilliant, and we did that, remember, using a DNS challenge. We didn't have to forward port 443 or port 80. So hopefully now what we can do is we could have a look in the container itself. So you could hop into here and validate that we've got the certificate. And you'll find that in the slash data folder here. You can see actually we've got the wildcard cert, the JSON, and then the key. So we've now got that valid certificate pulled down, which is great. So now that we have that up and running, we should be able to start accessing some of the things that I had specified already in the caddy file. And what's great is we can almost have that sort of static update already. So in that caddy file, all of these things should be ready to go as long as we've added these DNS entries. So let me pull up now a incognito window. And if I go to caddy.jimsgarage.co.uk, hopefully if we hit return, you can see here, yep, yeah, I've got the excellent hello web page, which if I go back to this caddy file and you look in the index HTML, you can see that I put hello in here. So that now proves that we've got the caddy website up and running serving that file. And as you can see, we don't actually have any issues with the certificate. So let's double check. Let's have a look at the certificate itself. Here we can see that we pulled down a SERP and it's valid. Perfect. That was dead simple. 
So now let's try TrueNAS. So now remember, TrueNAS does not reside as a docking container. It's on a different machine. It's a physical external service. And if we hit return, here you can see that we're using the same certificate and it's routing that external service. So now all you need to do is to be able to replicate that block within the caddy file for any of your additional external services. And now lastly, we want to try Portana. But there's one thing we'll have to do first. So over in Portana, you can either spin this up and add it to the network during the installation, or if you want to be lazy like me just for this demonstration, if we head down in the actual Portana container itself, go to the network and we'll stick it on the Caddy network, we'll click join. So now that should be on both of those networks, it is, which means now the Caddy should be able to see the Portana network and if you remember, we've only specified it as Portana 9443. I don't have a DNS entry for this in my pie hole, but I do have one for this here. So hopefully now if we copy this one here and we hop back into our browser window, if I should paste this into the browser window, we should now reach Portana. So if I hit return, excellent, we've reached Portana. So let me just log in and we'll see if it's the same one and I'm not telling any fibs. So this is looking promising and here you can see we've got the caddy and the Portana, which is the same as we have in the other tab over here via the IP address. So now we've got Portana, i.e. another container being routed behind Caddy, running as a Docker container, much like you'll have if you're following any of my videos with traffic. So hopefully that gives you now all three options, serving up a website, serving up an external service, and serving up an internal service. And as a quick demonstration, now that we've got the API open, why don't we hop back into our command line and let's see if we can do some requests to the API. So a simple way to test it is just to do a curl and to do a curl we can either do the IP address of the Docker host or we can actually use a local host and I believe it was sat on 2019 and then if we just do say slash config slash hopefully when we hit return you can see here that we've now got the configuration file for the caddy that's actually running at the moment. You'll see things that are specified in the caddy file here. So for example, listening to all interfaces on port 19, 2019. You'll see that we're listening on 443. You'll see that we've got Portainer, etc. And what's cool here is actually you can control, you can upload new configurations. You don't just have to manually edit this file. You could actually submit these changes using the API. Now, I think for a home lab, unless you're getting more advanced CI, CD pipelines, etc., you'll probably stick to the caddy file and just reboot the container. That's fine. But definitely for a more production ready setup, making use of the API is really powerful. And it's pretty much how most applications are going to be driven in modern days through APIs. Now, to my knowledge, this API is not authenticated. So as I said before, you really want to restrict access to this. So hopefully now you've got everything you need to know to comfortably deploy Caddy and then start spinning it up and serving it as a reverse proxy and a web server or with the knowledge of having it with valid SSL certificates. Let me know if this is something that you're going to be using and whether you think it's going to replace something like traffic. I think it's got some potential. I'm really interested to see some performance stats on it. Not that I really care from a home lab perspective, but certainly from a production standpoint on massive enterprises, performance of your proxy is going to be really important. I'll have to check that out and run some tests and hopefully I'll report back in the future. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit like, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.